Welcome to Perez Art Museum. My name is Adrienne Chadwick and I'm the Deputy Director for Education. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. In honor of her new installation, It Has a Golden Sun and an Elderly Gray Moon, Ulla von Brandenburg and PAM Assistant Curator Maria Elena Ortiz will discuss how the intersections of dance, color, textiles, ritual, and arch ar architecture question the human condition in relation to social hierarchies. Uh, please join us in the exhibition following the talk. Um, before we begin, I would like to remind you all to silence your cell phones. Um, also, this evening's talk will be streamed live on Pam's Facebook page, so please share the live stream with your network, and also you can live chat with us uh, tonight. It's my pleasure to introduce our speakers. Ulla von Brandenburg studied scenography and media art at the Academy of Fine Arts and Carl's, uh, Carl's who, Carl's who, he? I don't know. This is, there's gonna be a lot of German words, okay? <laughs> she also studied fine art at the Academy of Fine Arts in Hamburg. Recent solo exhibitions of her work have been presented at Secession Vienna Haas Constructive Zurich, Australian Center for Contemporary Art Melbourne, La Fonderie Darling Montreal, Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis, Kunsthaus Hamburg, Irish Museum of Modern Art Dublin, Palais de Tokyo Paris, and CCA Wattis Institute for Contemporary Art San Francisco. Significant group exhibitions have been presented in venues including Performa 15 New York, Musée National d'Art Moderne, uh, Centre Pompidou, Paris, MAMCO, Geneva, 19th Biennale of Sydney, Museum of Contemporary Art, Detroit, 53rd Venice Biennale, ICA Boston, and Tate, Tate Modern London. Her works belong to several prestigious collections, and today she lives and works in Paris. So please join me in welcoming our speakers, Ulla von Brandenburg and Maria Elena Ortiz. Good evening and welcome to the Paris Art Museum Miami. We're very excited to be here tonight, which is not only, um, it's also one of the first or perhaps the first solo big site installation that Ulla is doing here in the United States, and it's quite a privilege to do it here in Miami. Um, hello, I'm really happy to be here. And first of all, I wanted to thank Maria Elena. It was really great working with you. Um, I wanted to thank also Tobias and Franklin from PAM, um, and Jay and his team who did an incredible job on the installation. And last but not least, I wanted to thank Chloe. So um, tonight we wanted to give you an overview of Ulla's work. I think that something that um, might not come very obvious is the connections that it may also have to our context, specifically in relations of architecture, color, theater. theater. So we were going to show you guys a few works and talk about them and then ask a few questions at the end. So um, perhaps this is actually uh, site-specific work that uh, Ulla did at in Vienna in Secession, which I think that some of the tropes that you see in it very much um, pertain to what you see here in at Pound. Yeah, um, so I work in many different medias. There's on one side there's film, then there's performance, but for every time I show in a museum, I do like a very site-specific installation. And in the Vienna Secession, we had this rooftop window, and I created this curtain, which looks like if have, it would have blocked the light from the top window for a really long time. And with this bleaching pro process, I also worked here at the pump. And it's the whole installation was a kind of a stage, a theater stage, and you are coming from the back you're underneath these big curtains and then you're going through the big red curtain to climb upstairs, climb down to see in the end a film. So all my films before this, I show here in Pam, were in black and white. 
And um, for me, that was really important to erase the color, to not give any significance about when I shot this film, and also to be perhaps more in a kind of dreamlike space. And I was wondering, uh, why the theater curtain? And why the theater curtain? Why, why that? Um, I think the, the theater curtain is a maze you are I mean, you're whether be in front or behind, and when you're trespassing it, you're, it's a kind of a barrier, and you're on the other side. And I'm really interested in this kind of inside and outside, and going from an outside to an inside, and, um, and changing. It's also about transformation and how spaces can transform us. And this uh, particular installation, um, I shot, uh, I was showing the film Die Straße, which is in German, the street. And I'm born in uh, Karlsruhe, which is really close to the Black Forest in Germany. And there we have a big carnival tradition. And this carnival tradition is really old because it's before Christianism. And the costumes are still the same costumes than, I don't know, 3,000 years ago. And all this film, um, it's a kind of a collage of these um, rituals, which I collected actually around all Europe, um, carnival rituals. And it's also, I mean, you see also that this is a staged like street and all my films are one shot. That means they are filmed like performances and there's no editing. And um, also the film here in Pam is the, f the time you spend to watch the film is the actual time what it took to shoot the film. Which um, in our conversation, you, I remember you mentioned that you're very much interested in Hitchcock. Hitchcock also used to film in a similar way. Yeah, there's one really well-known film, The Rope of Hitchcock, and, and he used this, that the, he was filming into shirts to make like wrong cuts, and um, that is like, like, like one shot. And of course, it's like theater. Also, The Rope is like a theater play. Yeah, initially I was really um, taken by this idea of carnival, because I think that here in Miami, we have an idea of what that is. But we, I, I rarely thought how that manifests in Europe, in the European context. So I always like those type of bridges between the, there and here, which I think is quite compelling. I mean, uh, Carnival is in a very specific time. And in, in Germany, it's called Fastnacht, which means the, the night before fasting. And it's also about, of course, um, giving people uh, the possibility to make what they want, to get completely crazy, to be really calm the other rest, I mean, the rest of the year. It's also about, um, in the end, about power and also about um, shifting roles. And these are uh, cutouts, paperworks, with these are masks um, from the Black Forest. And this is the Sardinian Carnival. I shot a film um, in Sardinia with the Mamutones and the Isatoras, which are very, very similar to the masks and to the dances and rituals in, in Germany. And I was very interested in this similarity, which is all around the Mediterranean countries. This is another carnival scene. And this as well. And then what I also do is like big wall drawings. This is the, was a show this year in Akka in Melbourne. And I love the forest as a kind of image of um, unconsciousness. And of course, I mean, black forest is a forest, but I think forest is not only a German thing. I mean, everywhere there are forests and it's the image of um, this deepness where you get lost perhaps and where, I don't know, monsters can live. And I mean, we know the forest from fairy tale. So I was very happy about this installation because you had also the reflecting in the floor that there was this kind of mirror forest. And of course, there's the link to set design because the forest is kind of um, real size and you get in front as an actor. Um, this is another forest, a more abstract one, and I, I put a tent inside. So I'm very interested in fabric 
and patchwork. So this is a patchwork tent out of many pieces, bits and pieces from my collection of, of fabrics and old fabrics. And inside I, sh I showed a film which is called Shadow Play and you see three actors um, meeting behind the scene and singing uh, and dressing up actually f for getting ready for the theater play and they are, while that they're singing with my voice about being an actor and I mean more in a Shakespeare sense um, that what, what it is, um, what are we playing here in this world? What kind of roles do we have? Can we change our roles? Who wrote this play we're in? And in the end, so this is the first film, first image and the costumes are attached to the ceiling the actors come in, dress them up, help each other while dressing up, and also singing, oh, we're playing again, again, the same role, I'm really, I don't want to bow. And then in the end, they are making a puppet play, like um, mise en abîme, it's called in French, like a play in a play, where the puppets have the same costumes as the actors. Now, in the installation here, there's also fabric, and you just, you know, you say you're very interested in fabric. Like, can you tell us more about what that means? Um, I, for me, fabric is a kind of a revolutionary material because it, I mean, it's soft. You can roll it or squeeze it really small. You can put it out and... Uh, cover surfaces, you can make tents out of it, houses, and you cover at least, I mean, also yourself, of course, um, with fabric. And, and then I, I'm specifically really interested in, in patchwork, in this kind of recycling of fabric. That means fabric, which was already used in different kind of contexts, that means it was a shirt or it was a I don't know, whatever, and it gets something new. And also about patchwork, what is interesting is that it's, it exists in all cultures. So my grandmother and my grandmother, they were already doing quilts. And then I had a residency in Memphis, Tennessee, and then I, I saw all these quilts where you have in North, but also South America and actually all over the world. And, and then I was doing, getting more into patchwork. This is another installation, which I was showing with a shadow play together because it's about um, a play of objects which are pulled up to the ceiling, also like props in theater. And um, all these props are ready to play with, to make a theater play with. There's even a little costume of, um, of Italian carnival, um, which is kind of the personality in this play with all these objects. And then on the other side, you saw the shadows of these objects um, kind of in a similar process, like here in Pam, put on fabric. Why the shadow? Like, what, what, what's the interest on, on creating the shadows um, on the fabric? I, think, I mean, I did all, also like the shadow play the film. For me, sh the, the shadow is also like the black and white film, is a reduction of of something, so you, you reduce it to its own shape, and also it gets black, it gets, it can be a hole, like when you do cutouts, but if it's black, it gets like a, it, it is a surface for your own interpretation. It has also to do something with this, with this forest in the end, which is also kind of a um, cutout, and you project your own things inside. So this is why, why, sh why shadows or shadow play is so vivid, because every, body of you would like project your own content. And um, so after doing all these big installations with uh, curtains, I wanted to find like a smaller size for a curtain. And of course I was very much interested also in, in the fold. Um, there's one uh, important book of Deleuze, it's called um, Leibniz and the and the le pli, uh, I mean the fold after Leibniz and the Baroque, and um, he's talking about the fold and what is inside and what is coming outside. So all these um, paintings show uh, folds, and it's a kind of a trompe l'oeil. So they are completely flat, but they look like 
there, they would be actual folds. And then again, the props put in front of these paintings. Um, so this is, a, this is a witch knot. I read it, I found it in a house in France. This is a divining rod. I bend it and I put in front. Circles. And this is another Patrick work I did for a show in Paris. And um, actually this curtain was then the motive for the installation in the Palais de Tokyo. Um, so I, I, um, I photographed the folds of this patchwork curtain and I, drew, I was drawing these um, photographs and this was the pattern for this installation in the Palais de Tokyo. Now, you know, like looking at the work, you also see a very precise choice of colors, you know, that are repeated throughout some of the installations. Perhaps you would like, can we tell us more about that? Like why those colors are picked and where they come from? Uh, I use a lot of different kind of color theories. I mean, already I'm really interested in, in color theories. So I worked on Goethe's color theory, but then also Johannes Itten, who was a theoretist of the Bauhaus and who said, we don't need this kind of huge color wide I mean, we, knew, we don't use um, a lot of colors, we just need 12 colors, and from these 12 colors, we can describe any color um, in the world. So I was working already with very specific um, theories, but then it, it, it's also, of course, um, about my own range of color. Yeah, and I should give some context with that. Like, you know, there's been a lot of um, Western thinkers that theorize a lot about color, Newton being one of the first one that mentioned that uh, bl color is the blackness is the absence of light. So he created this duality in terms of how do human perceived color. And then later on, there were other uh, thinkers like Goethe and so on who actually started th considering color in a more subjective way, thinking that actually each individual has a different relationship to color and that each color has a, an, effect, an, effect, an effect on humans and how they relate to the world. But I mean, they have an effect to us also every day. And I mean, there's the example with the woman in the red dress or I mean, the other in examples. I mean, colors are saying, I mean, they import messages and this is also, um, I mean, you see the film they, uh, the, here, I show here, and there's the color yellow coming again and again, like in the, in the title. And um, the yellow is, for example, the color of the sun and of the, of the light, also of spirituality. And um, I mean, there are all meanings behind every color. And um, the installation in the Palais de Tokyo, I mean, this, this um, pattern of patchwork of the, of the what is it? Losange, the, it was also the pattern of the clowns or Pierrot. And this is a kind of an antipode to the king. So the installation I call the death of a king because it was a kind of a, like a democratic uh, place where everybody is at the same level and everybody is sued together in one society and there is nobody, nobody sticking out. And at the same time, I was really happy about this installation because it was completely um, for the people and they, and they used it and it was there for a very long time in the Palais de Tokyo. And it was actually not anymore my installation or it was for, for the public. Um, yeah. The, here I show also four watercolors. Um, this is a dancer. I drew her twice with dance. This is actually the first time I work with dance. And I was very much interested in the beginning of dance in the 1900, like Martha Graham or Mary Rickman about this liberation of the body and finding new movements. And um, also the drawings you see here yeah, these ones are the ones specifically for a poem. So this is not a dancer. This is a bear and his bear holder. This is uh, more um, 
uh, a watercolor about power and how, of course, the bear holder has power on the bear, but then in the end, the bear is much stronger and um, could eat him easily up and this kind of uh, uh, balance or, or not. And after this watercolor, you see this dancer who's jumping. And this woman, it, he's also, she's also dancing with fabrics like the dancers in the film. And these papers, I do them like the, like the it's, it's kind of a patchwork. So I'm collecting old papers from different kind of, I mean, from everywhere. And then I'm putting them together to do a new format. And this is also to um, kind of to contextualize these, these paintings in, I mean, in a different field and to say this is not, I mean, we are all made of history and there are many stories which made us up and all these stories are important. It's not a blank paper. Is that why the uh, watercolors in the gallery are also on the floor? Um, no. <laughs> I, would, I would say they're on the floor. Um, I mean, talking about the installation here, uh, I, when I came here six months ago, I thought, wow, this is a really high space, and, but I'm not doing like sculptures you could put in the center. So for me, it was about kind of conquering this space. So I thought I wanted to put stairs inside because I really wanted to, to show my new film, this film I did this year in the theater of Nantes in Paris. And, and then I thought it would be nice to separate the space in, with a diagonal in a black space and in a white space. And you're going through the black space to come to the white space. And so the black is this fabric um, and you have the stains of these drawings you just saw on the wall. So it's also about um, time. So these fabric is uh, something I know from, in, I live in France, and in France there's a lot, there are still a lot of old houses that have fabric on their, in their living rooms or wherever, and you see these stains when the sun bleached out, I mean, the rest, and then you see the dark stain. So for me it was um, this kind of in-between time. So these uh, watercolors hang there, and then we put them down on the floor, and now they're, they're standing there, but it's also to, um, I mean, to put art from the hook. What I like about that a lot is that, you know, as a curator, when we walk into a gallery, sometimes we get very um, um, romantic about such a high t r this gallery that is so high and you think about, you know, the height a lot, but by creating that small space and also by placing things on the floor in a such like, um, subtle yet powerful way, you get reminded of the bottom. You get reminded of that other space that is also very important when encountering a gallery, which I find very neat. And it's also, I mean, kind of against hierarchy and, uh, and it's, a, it's a very dangerous place because I put them there where they could be heard. Um, and then talking about the other objects, there are these fishing rods. Um, which I showed already in another installation in Nuremberg, and it's, uh, but these fishing rods are really important to the film because it's about, um, I mean, you know these measuring sticks for snow or for water, so I put different kind of colors, also the colors which you um, see again in the film, and it's about um, your own measurements, that is, it's not about inch or centimeter, it's about your own measurement, how you would measure your movement, because we all, when we move, make different kind of um, measurements, steps. Yeah, it's like the subconscious space and then the public space in the gallery. So I guess we're moving towards the film. Um, tell us about the film. Um, the film, um, so uh, this is my first color film. I did a lot of black and white films before, and um, and because I wanted to put color in, it was very important that it's all about color, and so I decided to make this um, white stage where the colors stick out very much, 
and that the fabric now is not in the installation, that the fabric is in the film. So the first uh, minutes, you see only the fabric, like curtains, moving, um, moving away. And after that, you see that there are actually dancers and, and bodies. And um, it was a co-production with the theater of um, Nanterre, and they let me in their theater for two weeks. And I rehearsed there with um, seven dancers, and um, I had help from a choreographer. And they built this um, stairs I designed, which was um, influenced by Alphonse Appia, which is a, which was a stage designer in 1910 in in, in Germany. And um, and oops, I put it a bit forward. Why the motif of the stairs, which we saw in the first installation, now we see it here again. Like um, perhaps there's is yeah, there are many. I mean, there are many reasons. Stairs are, um, I mean, they're, they're inclining, of course, a movement and time because you take the first step and then the second and you go up or down. It's also being on, on different levels. And, um, and, and then I was interested also in this um, spiritual uh, notion of stairs, like in the Aztec pyramids, for example, when you go up, um, you do this way to to bring something or to be get closer to God. There's also the in, in Christian belief. There's also the Jacob's ladder. I mean this spiritual uh, notion of going up. But then there's also a power notion, of course. Because I mean, for example, the the king or whoever um, Hollande who is uh, stepping down from the stairs and, and putting himself into scene and also the time going down the stairs. It's also about um, being, being on a stage. I mean, stairs are also, of course, a stage. And this scene, um, you see Benoit. So there are a lot of uh, dancers, which I worked already before as actors. And this is important to me to have a kind of a team. So Benoit, I was already um, the, the gray hair man. He's already in my films 10 years ago. So also you see all these characters um, kind of coming again and aging. I mean, like we are aging, changing, taking new roles, but it's also about the team. And if I work with the same people together, um, there's so much, you know, already there to build up. Um, so Benoit has this um, like cardboard uh, bucket like cup, cup yeah. in his hand and he's uh, begging money and then uh, later the dancers are dancing to the rhythm of this money um, sound and you see him also later um, now you, you see later also a scene where somebody is dividing his um, fabric and giving him the half like um, St. Martin. And this scene, I mean, it's, it's of course about this community, uh, whatever, living there. Um, and um, this community, they are in different kind of states. I mean, like us or society, family. Um, so here they are building a kind of double stairs to carry this person up, but then, um, but then in the end this person goes down. So it's also um, about trust and your position um, in this in this society. Um, I'm, you know, it's it's interesting because when you walk into the space, you or when you see the film, you might not think about this work as being political at all. And I think, you know, um, it's, it's not something that, that it's obvious. However, one could read it in those terms also when you think about community, this individual, society. Uh, yeah, it is <laughs> political because um, I, I'm born in the 70s and, um, and I was thinking a lot like, what's going on in, in France and also in Germany and, and everywhere that uh, they are cutting all these things down 
and they were great inventions. I mean, not from the 70s, but in the 70s in Germany, for example, they, there was a phase where uh, all um, social achievement were on a kind of a top level. And in Germany, for example, they're cutting all that down. So for me, it was a kind of an exercise to think about how, how the community, the society has to carry an individual and, um, and, and be there. But then also about, about your transformation in this society and about trust, for example. This scene is, is, a, lot about, uh, is a lot about trust. And this is about um, yeah, the, the mirroring. And of course, I mean, dance, I did a lot before with text and singing. And you can um, be probably more precise and, and, and um, tell very specific stories. If you work with dance, what I was really uh, interested in is that it's so much more abstract and you're telling stories, of course, without, without words. And it's more um, about states of minds or states of psychological um, situations. Did you choreograph the, the movement of the dancers? Um, I mean, we were we were writing a choreography in terms of it's also I mean I'm working like the patchwork is a collage of papers of fabric. Um, this film is a collage of different uh, different scenes, and one scene is is coming after the other, and. Um, and all these scenes uh, are coming from very, very different backgrounds. So what we did is that we wrote a choreography, but then the dancers, they, they were often very, very free with their movement. I mean, it was not a very precise choreography. So you mentioned at the beginning that it was shot at one, with one shot, right? It was like... So how many times did it took you to get that, those 22 minutes? Is, is it was like a one-time thing or? So, what I didn't mention, I think, before is that I, that I shoot it on 60 millimeter, or I said it. Um, so with 60 millimeter, it's, it's much more expensive than video. So there, there are actually only three shots possible financially wise. So, um, and then you have to choose one of these three shots. What happened to the other two? I guess they're like in an archive or something of yours. Sorry? The other two, do you still? Yeah, yeah, I keep them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and just um, talking about finishing the, the, the film, um, it was, I mean, of course, it's about, it's about color. It's also about painting and, I mean, what happens when blue is next to orange and when they flip their fabrics and all the kind of different, what I said before about fabric, all the different kind of um, states of fabric. So like packing somebody in and pulling somebody, pulling an injured body on the floor and um, folding them and so on. And the, uh, this is the last image and for me, it was important to show where we show the film. And this is also, I mean, Bertolt Brecht in Germany did this a lot in his, with his pieces he wrote in the 20s and 30s um, about showing where, um, where you are and that you, these are only actors on the stage or in that sense, I mean, in that case, they're only dancers, but they're they are on a stage that you're not in this illusionary space that the camera shows everything and shows also this kind of uh, funny situation that they're actually dancing in front of an empty public. But then, I, but then trying to get them together with these two yellow fabrics, which are kind of like signs and they're signing to, to each other and the yellow is coming from the other sides is also about mixing or, or trying to get, uh, to interfere these two worlds, what we said, which is often separated by a curtain. And uh, the other thing also is that um, if you're sitting, because you can actually sit on the first step in the gallery, and then you see this empty theater, you yourself as a viewer can become an actor within this film, because you're sitting 
in the, sta in the same stage set as the people that are dancing in this white staircase. Yeah, and, and I showed this film just for the Prima Solution in um, Paris, and there the stairs are, ex you can walk on, so there is much more, of course, that you are part of the installation because you can walk on. This was not possible here because the height is so steep, so actually we had also to make this very high step that people wouldn't go on, but, um, but it's very much about also, uh, yeah, being, being part, getting part of, of the film and, um, I mean, and, and moving. And also this first part, the dark part, it's, it's kind of an initiation in a way to get ready or to get more um, yeah, receptive for what you see later with the colors and the movement. And it's also always about um, the movement of the visitors, that the visitors making their own movement. Yeah, it's almost like a theater set, you know, like there's props in the smaller space. And then at the other side, it's almost like the space for performing or the space for rehearsal. Because in a way, you, you can interpret the dancers also as being in a rehearsal when you look at this empty theater. Yeah, that's true. But it's important that nobody is obliged to do anything, you know, I mean, it's not about... Um, being really a participant or you don't have to do anything, this is really important for me. That is all, I mean, you do your own way, way through this. And if you want to see three minutes or 22, this is, I mean, this is your decision and all is possible. So, um, I think that this is actually the end. <laughs> of our conversation, but perhaps there's some questions or comments. Um. Um, thanks for that uh, very uh, interesting talk. Um, you obviously involve a lot in color, and you showed a lot of it, uh, but I noticed that the steps and all the artists are almost always monochromatic. Is it just for contrast, or is there a meaning to that? You talked about the steps going up, going down, but why are they all one color? You mean the, the steps and the insulation? Yes and the artists as well, the clothes they were wearing, be they're all white or all beige, they were all very monochromatic. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, it is about color. So I wanted to have the, the space and the stairs completely white but to being just the structure and being the architecture, like in the black and white films. But then that the colors stick very much out. But in, in the beginning, every dancer has one fabric and the dancer himself or herself has the same color but in faded away. Hi. Uh, modernist architecture seems to be a recurrent space in your uh, in your work. Could you comment about um, what it's is uh, significance or important uh, in your career? Um, I would say it's about. I mean, it's about reduction and um, how architecture affects our our living and our movement and. Um, how we live in these spaces. And I did, um, one of my films I did in the Villa Savoie of uh, Corbusier. Um, and there it was very much about um, how these, these uh, I mean like Corbusier, these ideas of modern living um, and these idea how people would live in these houses are kind of somehow different from the actual people living in these spaces that they would say, you can't have curtains. But it, it was also about, of course, this ut utopic, about utopia, about this new uh, human being who, who doesn't need anymore all this velvet and who doesn't need anymore after Walter Benjamin. 
um, these traces on the velvet um, um, fauteuil. Um, so these these are questions I'm really interested in. Also, Mies van der Rohe, who had very specific ideas about not having curtains, and then in this film of uh, the Corbusier with the Corbusier villa, it was this kind of family living in this space and having a lot of problems and kind of not fitting together with this utopic and modernist um, uh, thinking. And I also wanted to add that, um, you know, stairs, when you think about like Gallery Lafayette, you know, this big, uh, kind of like the, the, this idea of the 20th century mall, you know, became this iconic uh, place in that structure. And even till today, when we think about our mall, stairs have this kind of relationship to that very commercial space, which also marks kind of like the emerge of the bourgeoisie. And even this museum has a big staircase um, that denotes in a way that's kind of like you're going up, getting higher to a place that was actually where our galleries are. So it's certainly something that might not be as obvious as we just interact with them all the time. However, they, they are a symbol of movement and of, of a particular um, relationship to space that we uh, as humans are kind of engraved with or, or have been kind of like something that we go back to constantly. Um, I, th seeing that most of your work is so theater-based, have you ever considered actually doing the set designs for a complete play, or is that too limiting uh, for you, or is that an idea you would consider? Actually, I studied set design. I mean, that was my first study. And I, I worked as an assistant in theaters. And I liked the world of theater, but then you do only one thing. You do only the set design. And, um, and then I, in the same time, I discovered the arts, and it seemed to be so much more things are possible. Um, but now I think I would, I would very much like that to do, to do it and, and go back there. Yeah. OK, thank you. Well, actually, if I may, I have another question. Um, also, it seems to me that you very much think about in your pieces about our roles in life, why we're here, and trying to escape that with your curtain, stepping through the curtain. Do you think that it's just an underlying wish that we could ever accomplish, or is it a cycle that we will always return to? where we are, but we just wish to be somewhere else, which is kind of the feeling I get in some of the pieces. I think we are all on a kind of journey, and we are going from, from space to space, and, from, and we are all passing many curtains. I mean, I wouldn't say every day, but in our life at least. And I am interested in, this, in, in images of this, um, of this travel actually so so i think we are we are doing this i'm just interested in in trying to make it more conscious what is this what are these other spaces and what do we get with that what does it affect to us it's about getting more conscious about about space and travel inner travel thank you but also perhaps of this like Shakespearean idea of that um, the world's a stage and we're just actors in it. Like given what we're doing right now, it's just a performance of sorts, which I feel like more than, like I read it instead of more than escaping, actually more liberating in a way because you can become whatever you want to. Yeah. Well, if there are any more questions, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And please, please uh, go to see the show, which opened just at 6, so less than, a, than two hours ago. Um, and thank you again.